Okay. My name is Jerry Miner. I'm 46 years old. Uh, I was born in Memphis, Tennessee, but I grew up uh, in Flint, Michigan. Uh, my mother and father were divorced when I was about one or two years old, um, somewhere in between that time. And um, after that, my mother, she she went through a, a few religious organizations. It's, it's really hard for me to remember because I was really young then, but she was involved in a few religious organizations, um, some that I can't remember exactly what they were, but she was heavily involved in trying to find something through religion that I do remember. She grew up in a very abusive um, household. Uh, her mother died when she was five years old, and her, and her siblings were subsequently split up between a bunch of family members. So she didn't really have a family, per se, to grow up with. And I think uh, she was always seeking something uh, like that. And after she got divorced from my father, I think she was seeking a group, you know, to, to, uh, to find some kind of acceptance, security. Uh, when I was around seven years old, six or seven years old, my mother came in contact with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, a lady came to her door. We lived um, in, the, in the suburbs of Flint, Michigan. At the time, my mother was newly divorced. And uh, she started going to the meetings, uh, became really heavily involved really quickly. So that was around 19, end of 1975, 1976. Um, she became a full-fledged member in 1977. That's when she was baptized. So 1977 was around 10 years old. Was when my mother really, like, accepted it. Uh, she came in contact when I was around seven, but she became a full fledged. So at a certain at a, at a certain time, I started to around age 19, 18. Um, I started to have not necessarily doubts, but but uh, it became I'm really depressed. Um, obviously, I didn't have a college education. I didn't have a lot of job prospects. Um, and oops, a lot of my friends were starting to have a lot. I had a friend that died um, after not receiving a, um, a blood transfusion. Um, and I had a lot of other friends who were having just really a lot of emotional problems and were um, just um, having a hard time in a lot of different ways, were succumbing to a lot of different things, drugs and violence. A lot of different things that I didn't expect and was told that I would not see, you know, within this organization, especially with the young people. And so I was starting to become disillusioned, um, and I found a girlfriend. But in all of that, um, I was still going to the elders in my congregation and saying, hey, I'm, I'm having a problem. I don't know what my problem is. Um, and finally, they... Uh, with it, this was me approaching them and saying, "Hey, I've got a problem. I want help." Them saying, "Well, you need to be to fellowship for a while." And that was their uh, their formula for bringing me back into it somehow, getting me not disillusioned somehow. So their their solution when you went to the I remember when I was on ten, I became more aware of it when I found out how restrictive I guess it was. Uh, there was some things that I couldn't do, so. At uh, eight years old, nine years old, I wanted to become a Cub Scout. And um, so I'd come to my mother and say, hey, I want to be a Cub Scout. She would go to the person that was um, studying with her, uh, the term that Jehovah's Witnesses use. That's when you're kind of mentored. So when things like that would come up, when I say, hey, mom, I want to be the Cub Scout, going to be in the Cub Scouts, I'd notice that she'd ask this lady who'd come to our house, and then I'd get an answer, which that never Never, we never had anything like that before, you know, in our household. I, then later on, I found out, well, um, God doesn't like you to be in the Cub Scouts. Um, and at that age, I didn't really know why. All I knew was that I was given, being given an explanation of, that God didn't like the Cub Scouts. So that was when I first kind of got the difference that this was a different kind of organization thing that we ran. I was used to going to church. I'd gone to church with my, all my relatives, my, my aunts and uncles, my dad. You know, even though they were divorced, I still had a... A good relationship with my dad. Um, we lived in the same town. I'd see him on the weekends. And then as it goes on, it, it seemed like everything from school, what I was studying in school, um, even to where we lived, seemed to be pred kind of predicated on um, this organization that we had gotten involved in. Um, and then I've started to also be taught. So I'm going to five meetings a week. Um, also, I have my mother, um, she's encouraged to study the publications with me. 
So I'm also being indoctrinated, so to speak, um, during that time. So my mother at least would take at least an hour a week to sit me down and um, go through uh, publication. A lot of these publications that they have are based, you know, for uh, young people. Um, so she would get a book that was for a young person, and she would sit down and try to study that with me. And then, um, as time goes on, she even went to my mother uh, was a Uber Jehovah's Witness, so she 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 took it to the farthest extent. I mean, she was teaching me the deepest things about that organization and their philosophy and their theology at a really early age. I mean, I think I knew a lot of things at at ten or eleven years old, and. Um, and a lot of that was really disconcerting. I really, a lot of it, I did not want, and I vocally, like, say, I don't want to know this. <laughs> I'm not interested in knowing this. I don't want to know this stuff. And also, um, deep prophecy, Bible prophecy things, things like that, of things that I just was not interested, or didn't have the mental capacity to to even be interested at that age. But my mother, um, almost like forced that kind of stuff on me to force me to learn it. I can actually say with, with in my situation that the Jehovah's Witnesses may have made it uh, a little bit better as far as the abusive situation in my family. I still consider my mother abusive. I got beat a lot, um, and those were usually for behavioral things, um, you know, for lying or not doing the chores or whatever. Um, but uh, I can say that it was better after she became a Jehovah's Witness. She seemed to have a little bit of handle on her, a little bit of better handle on her, uh, her anger, uh, and outburst. But um, I, it definitely did not um, end it. It just made it a little bit different. Um, yes, they do encourage um, uh, physical discipline, but they they also encouraged uh, more than that. And I will say this, there was an incident when I was growing up of a mother, a, a friend of mine who's, um, who the child welfare services got called on, and I saw my mother's behavior actually change after that. But it wasn't like it was great. I mean, I still got beat, um, <laughs> uh, and I still think that the uh, organization condoned that kind of thing. They definitely were, um, they definitely had the, uh, the mantra of, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child. I mean, that was... I, I remember as a child in this incident that I'm talking about, a friend of mine, uh, when, the, when the state was called in uh, as far as to see as, if she was being um, abused, um, I remember feeling like, well, I don't know why they're doing that to the parent. Um, she's totally justified in beating her child because the Bible says that we can do that. I remember feeling, as a child, feeling that way. I saw so many children that were, you know, used, that got corporal punishment used against them, physical punishment used against them in the Kingdom Hall. And um, it's something that people don't talk about. Um, and since there's just an okay, uh, an overall okay with corporal punishment, um, I thought that there was a real lack of, of really watching for children's well-being. And that, a coupled along with just the fact that there was an organization that uh, was kind of dictating the way my mother was raising me, so that meant, you know, I didn't have any aspirations to go to college because at that point the organization was encouraging children not to go to college, and so that influenced all the classes that I took in school, and even influenced my uh, my overall like, you know, motivation in school. What good was it to do any good when the world was going to come to an end, and I was encouraged not to go to college anyway, so. Um, all those things like influenced me very heavily in, in my upbringing growing up, you know, and I would say a lot of things negatively. I really wish that I had the, you know, the, the advantage of being able to have the college prep courses before I did end up going to school much later on. Um, I, I was lucky enough to have the influence of my father, who I kind of like split off from because, because of religious reasons. Um, I hadn't like totally lost contact with him, but I definitely was pursuing a, a course that was totally um, along with the organization, and so I limited my contact with my own father. <sighs> Around age 19, 18, um, I started to have not necessarily doubts, but but uh, it became a really depressed. Um, obviously, I didn't have a college education. I didn't have a lot of job prospects, um, and. Oops, a lot of my friends were starting to have a lot. I had a friend that died 
um, after not receiving a, um, a blood transfusion. Um, and I had a lot of other friends who were having just really a lot of emotional problems and were um, just um, having a hard time in a lot of different ways, were succumbing to a lot of different things, drugs and violence, a lot of different things that I didn't expect and was told that I would not see you know, within this organization, especially with the young people. And so I started to become disillusioned, um, and I found a girlfriend. But in all of that, um, I was still going to the elders in my congregation and saying, hey, I'm, I'm having a problem. I don't know what my problem is. Um, and finally, they, uh, with, it, this was me approaching them and saying, hey, I've got a problem. I want help. Them saying, well, you need to be disfellowshipped for a while. And that was their, uh, their formula for bringing me back into it somehow, getting me not disillusioned somehow. Well, certainly some of the po uh, policies haven't changed. I don't know if people are, uh, I can't say whether people are uh, following the policies, but obviously um, the threat of not following their policies is of uh, total disconnect and um, disfellowshipping. So that policy still stands. So as long as that kind of policy still stands where, I mean, I haven't talked to my mother um, and I haven't had a meaningful conversation since I left the organization. I'm just, uh, more than 20 years ago, and I haven't had any kind of conversation with her in the last couple of years. Um, and I think, and that's all because of this gap of this religion. You know, she, she's told that you're not supposed to come in contact, and they're constantly told not to contact, not to talk to uh, relatives that are um, disfellowshipped. Um, I was, I, I feel like I was at a really young age when I was in it. I had no, uh, I didn't really have a good. Um, idea of what the organization was uh, or what I was getting into when I got into it. Um, but even so, I still feel like um, it's a very unloving, unchristian thing to do to divide families. And essentially that's what's happening when you tell one family member not to talk to another family member because of religious reasons. The different things in my personality and the things that I want to say as an artist, I think, um, I mean, obviously are influenced by my background and the things that I've gone through and come through. Uh, I've, I happen to mention uh, or meet a lot of people who have had a similar background to me. Um, I mean, for one thing, I became an actor and a comedian because um, I had to find a career very quickly <laughs> because I felt like I was behind and I had to find out what I was doing. I mean, I, who knows what I would have become in a different situation, but um, it was something that I knew that I could do. I, I kind of figured I was funny because I knew I was funny in school, and I and it was really the only thing that I had. Um, I didn't have a lot of background academically because that just wasn't encouraged. So something that I could do quickly is like, like I know I can make people laugh, so I got right up on stage right after I got this fellowship. Um, child friendly means you know one of the main things is having a choice, giving a child a choice. Uh, to what religion that they're going to become. I think that that's important. Every human being should have that. I think a lot of people would agree with that. Um, it's something that I wasn't given to me. I wasn't given the choice not to be a Jehovah's Witness. Um, I, th I think that, that that might be disputed. I might, they might say, no, you were given the choice, but I was given the choice along with losing my family, <laughs> losing my support. So I don't really think that's a fair choice. Um, and, uh, and to keep in mind the children don't necessarily and don't and shouldn't be making the commitments that adults are making. The adults have experience and, and um, everything on their side, legal, the legality of, of, of being able to make a choice for their, for their future, and children shouldn't be held to that at that age. They should be able to get all the facts and do the same thing that adults have and make their decision on their own on what religion that they're going to be. I, obviously, I know that, you know, Parents are going to have their children go to the services with them. They're going to have them with them. I understand that. But I think that there's, a, there's also some consideration to letting the child make his own choice. And um, I think that's it's important. So if that's done, I think that that can help a lot. Um, but also keeping in mind, too, that um, we are 
uh, advancing as, as, as mankind goes on and then we've discovered certain things and we've discovered things about rearing children and uh, corporal punishment and I think that that should have just as much a part of the discussion as uh, the moral part or the, the whatever text your religion may be um, adhering to. I think we should also keep in mind what we know. What we know is the, uh, that are the things that are beneficial for children. We should also keep that in mind along with whatever the Bible says.